Hello the boys and girls and welcome back to this brand new video. In this video I'm going to show you how to interact with objects in Element inside your canvas and how to get some interaction if you hover or click some elements inside the canvas element. Have fun watching the video right now and let's go. So actually as you can see I have the canvas element inside my HTML and, uh, and inside the main.js I just created some basic stuff like the window width and window height of the canvas and of course some background color and the canvas take the whole width and height of the window and maybe you know if you create some elements inside the canvas like squares or like arcs and circles um, they are not created inside the DOM inside the HTML um, so if you want to interact with them, you have to do your own stuff and that's not that easy as you think So I'm gonna show you how to do that in this video tutorial of my canvas series. So Of course first things first we need to create a new class Which I'm gonna call circle and inside the circle of course we get a constructor and inside the constructor we are gonna need some stuff like for example the um, X, uh, let's say X point, for example, the Y point, the radius, and maybe some color to get some interaction later. If you click the circle, it will change the color. So we're gonna say this dot X point is equal to X point to make that variable global inside the instance of an object. And of course, do this for Y point, do this for radius, and of course, do this for the color. Here we go. All right, so. To draw that circle, we need to create a function which will take the context of the canvas and the context uh, is specified in the beginning of the file here right now. So what we need of course always is context.begin path and in the end always do that context.close path. So actually inside between that two um, functions we're gonna do the magic here to create an arc. So what we're gonna need to do is we need to call the function context.arc, which is actually the canvas function to create circles and arcs. And as you can see, it takes the X and Y positions, the radius and the um, start and end angle. So you can rotate that circle. And of course, if it's anti-clockwise. So actually, actually, as you can see, we specified this in the um, this.x point, this.y point, and this.radius. And we're gonna start in the um, start angle of zero, and the end angle will something be like math.pi, um, of course, multiplied with two. And we're gonna say false, it will be not anti clockwise. And to draw that function, of course, we need to context.stroke. So to see the circle inside the canvas, of course, we need to create a circle. So we're gonna say let circle is equal to new circle. And here inside this, we're gonna do some um, basic numbers here. For example, 200, 200, a radius of 100, and the background color of red here, for example. And we're gonna say circle dot draw with the context as an argument. And now, as you can see, it draws the circle. And of course, um, we're gonna specify some little basic styling stuff here right now. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna say context.stroke style, which is actually to be gray for example. So as you can see the borders of the circle are gray right now. And of course we can make that a little bit um, bigger and the line uh, we're gonna say line width is equal to for example three. It's a little bigger right now of course you can something take like 30. That's really big, but uh, we will keep it for free right now. And of course we need the background color. So we're gonna say context.fill um, style is equal to this.color. And of course to draw that, we need to context.fill. Here we go. Now it's red and in my opinion, a little bit too red. So let's take a lighter red, for example, something like this here. Yeah, it's lighter, nice. Okay, so. Now, how can we detect the click on that element, which is actually not rendered inside the DOM? So um, we need to um, get um, something like the canvas because the canvas is clickable because it's an element inside the HTML. So actually what we need to do here is we can say canvas 
Dotty went listener. And actually the canvas is specified here because we take the ID of canvas and canvas has the ID of canvas. So we can add the event listener of click. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a function here. Oh, what the hell? And here we just can say, for example, something like console.log clicked clicked canvas to specify more. All right, so now, first we need here on Calmer. All right, and now if we click somewhere in the canvas, doesn't matter where, we're gonna get the console.log clicked canvas because the canvas take the whole width and height of the window. So if you click in the circle, if you don't click in the circle, you always will get that lock. All right, that's not what we're gonna need here right now. We need to specify something if we click the circle. And the first instinct you have to do here is you need to say, okay, you need a function inside the circle, um, which will lock something if we click it. Okay, and now if we click inside the canvas, we're gonna say circle.click circle. Okay, what happened right now? You will get two locks wherever you click. Of course, this will not work. So we need to um, specify the um, X and Y positions of where we click. And that's easy to do. You can pass an argument inside the um, add event listener and that's called the event. And all right, if you gonna, um, let's get rid of this, lock out the event, you will see you will get some basic information about your click. And that's, for example, the X and Y position and of course the offset of the window. You um, will always get the information about where you click. Okay, so actually you can easily um, get information about the um, coordinates here. And here we're gonna say, for example, something like const rect or const win, no window is a bad keyword, let's take rect, is equal to canvas.get bounding client rect. And that's because the um, canvas is always relative, so you need to get the um, bounding clients of the rect and as you can see here, you will get the DOM rect. Is, um, it starts on 0, 0 and the width and height is, has these values because I have here the, um, the responsive view of the website here right now and it takes these values. That's what you actually need. So to get your new um, X and Y position, you can easily say const X is equal to events.clientX minus rect.left. And you can do the same for the Y. And of course you can take the Y here and take the top, all right? So let's easily lock this out, what we get here right now. So let's get the console lock. And inside this, we get some X, plus X, and we will get some Epsilon plus Epsilon. All right, if we click somewhere, you will always get the two coordinates here. Pretty simple, right? And as you can see, if you click on the left top of the page, you will get maybe zero, zero. It's not that hard to hit it. Uh, maybe we'll get it. No, 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 no. Uh, it's not that easy to click that here. All right, so as you can see, you will get the coordinates here and now you can work with them. So let's call the function here, click.circle, uh, circle.click circle. And let's pass in the X and Y position. And of course we need to get that X mouse here and that Y mouse here. And now we just can lock um, here something like X mouse and Y mouse. Y mouse, all right. Now if we click that, we get the coordinates. All right. So to calculate the distance between two points, you need something that's called the Pythagorean theorem. And actually you have two points. The first point is the middle of the circle. Um, and the second point is the coordinates where you click. And to get the distance, you need the Pythagorean theorem, which is a little math function that calculates the distance between two points. And in the end, you need to check 
if this distance is smaller than the radius of the circle, you clicked inside the circle. And if it's not, you will click not inside the circle. So let's get a simple math of the Pythagorean theorem. And what you actually need to do is you need to multiply two things and um, you need to add this to another multiplication, all right? And inside this multiplication, you need to subtract something. That's basically the um, function of the Pythagorean theorem. Um, and in the end, you need to take the square root of that. So what you need to do here is the x mouse minus the this dot x point multiplied with the x mouse minus this dot x point. All right, so let's get here to, to multiply this with the same for the y mouse minus this dot y point. And here again, the y mouse minus this dot y point. All right, and in the end, what you need to do is you need to take the math.squirt. All right, that's the point you will get. So let's log out the distance to see what we did here. If we click somewhere inside the canvas, you will get the distance between the, um, in pixels here of course, between the middle of the circle and the, the mouse coordinates. So if you go far away, you will get, you will see the distance is bigger. And the distance will be smaller if you go deeper to the circle. And in the middle of the circle, as you can see, it's really, really small. It seems to be zero. If you hit the middle, oh, I hit the middle, nice. And Actually, now you need, only need to check if the radius, if distance is smaller than the radius. So you can say if distance is smaller than this dot radius. Actually, we will um, return true, for example. Otherwise, else we're gonna return false. And of course, now to see the results, we need to console.log the result here right now. And now you click false if you don't click in the circle and you get true if you click in the circle. And actually that's all the magic behind. And now we can do some stuff, for example, change the color if you click in the circle. And for that we need to create a function that is named change color. And what we need here is a new color. And of course, we're gonna say that this dot color, here we go, this dot color is equal to new color. And of course we need to redraw the circle and what we actually need to do is to call the function draw. Cool. Now here inside this, we can say this dot change color. If you click inside the circle, this dot change color. And here we need a new color. Let's say, for example, a blue. So let's say um, RGB like this. Hope, hopefully this is a good blue. I don't know. And if we click outside of the circle, it will be the red again. Okay. So here we go. Hopefully this works. So we still got false. And if you click inside the circle, it will get blue. And here red again, blue, red, blue, red. Nice. So actually this is something um, we don't need right now. We don't need to lock the true and false here right now. This is actually all we have to do to get some interaction with the canvas. So I click blue, red, blue, red. That's really nice and an easy way how to interact with your canvas elements and objects. I hope you guys liked the video. If you liked the video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you want to see more Canva tutorials, hope to see you in the next video. Please subscribe. Bye.